Okay, welcome. Brian Keeler here. We're at the Community School of Music and Art in Ithaca, New York, and uh, tonight I'm going to be doing a pastel portrait demonstration in one sitting. I might do a little bit of work on it in my studio at a later time, but basically it's going to be what we call an alla prima pastel portrait. And uh, alla prima is a word that means at one sitting in Italian or at the first, and that's what I'm going to be endeavoring to do here tonight. Uh, and so uh, we have a, a small audience here in attendance and um, uh, I'm going to be explaining uh, about the process and different stages and uh, about the pastel medium. So um, before I start, I'm going to explain a little bit about pastel. And uh, I have a set here, maybe you could uh, uh, zoom in on this. This is a set of uh, new pastels and I've been using these for uh, many years. They're hard pastels. and. Um, I'll be using these probably for about 90% of the portrait and uh, they're great. They're a great traveling set. I use them um, when I travel to Italy or wherever. They're light, compact and uh, fairly clean and one advantage of the hard pastels is that you can get a sharp edge with them. You can take a razor blade and unlike the soft pastels, uh, you can get a nice crisp edge with them. And uh, I also have a set of um, of pastel pencils. I hardly ever use these, but uh, before I start, uh, I may not get to, to uh, using these when I actually uh, um, paint tonight, but this is a pastel that I did as a demonstration uh, Saturday, yesterday, for the uh, class that I was teaching. And I'm just going to show you a little technique that the pastel pencils come in handy for, and that is uh, uh, blending. And um, this is a uh, kind of a lime green and you can just use it to uh, kind of feather over the, uh, the image to, uh, to kind of blend and fuse like an oil painting. So um, with pastel, uh, like I said, I want to work uh, light. But and part of the reason for working up uh, light is to not fill up the uh, tooth of the uh, paper too quickly. And that's uh, one of the advantages of, uh, of a hard pastel is that it doesn't come off as uh, readily as the, uh, as the soft pastel. And um, I like to uh, mention um, the, uh, the distinction between uh, drawing and painting and uh, painting and drawing. Uh, sometimes we compartmentalize those. In other words, uh, getting the drawing done and then you just kind of fill it in. But uh, the process seems much more enjoyable to me to think of it as I'm continually uh, uh, continually drawing and, uh, and making uh, uh, adjustments and so forth. Uh, okay, uh, it does actually p appear a little bit cooler to me. Maybe I'll start a little bit uh, darker than that. Uh, this is a kind of a cool gray here. And um, this secondary light is coming up um, here too, um, below the model's uh, mouth. It's a little uh, uh, tricky there at first. Uh, part of the reason of starting uh, with this uh, slightly darker color, it'll give me uh, uh, room to go lighter and build up the highlights uh, as I uh, go. The light appears uh, warmer over here for, for some reason. Uh, not done her, uh, her eyebrows yet, and that's uh, not too do here now. And now that I'm uh, doing her eyebrows, I see that I have not uh, 
done this area above her uh, eye yet, um, which brings in the idea that uh, you can let the color of the paper sometimes uh, show through and it become part of the finished painting. Um, you don't always have to cover every square inch. The value and the color of the paper can uh, work for you at certain times. Uh, I'm thinking this, uh, this light in this area here is coming actually not from the primary source but from uh, the back lighting 